Hello everyone, welcome to Organic 2 Lab. This is the experiment video for electrophilic aromatic substitution. So starting out, what we're going to see here are each one of these seven test tubes being prepared. Um, and uh, test tube number one is going to have phenol in it. Test tube number two coming up is going to have anisol in it. Test tube number three is going to have toluene in it. Test tube number four is going to have diphenyl ether. Test tube number five is going to have uh, acetanilide in it. Test tube number six is going to have four bromophenol. And lastly, test tube number seven is going to have one naphthol. Now you want to think about all of these benzene derivatives in terms of what's their functional group, are they orthopara directors, are they activating groups, deactivating groups. All right, so in prepping for the first sequence of reactions, adding all seven test tubes to a hot water bath, um, and you can kind of see the red of that thermometer, right? Monitoring the temperature of this hot water bath. It's going to be at approximately 35 degrees Celsius. All right, some of these, a uh, big thing to remember here, it's not going to be uh, a huge change in color per se. Um, so bromine is going to be kind of a brownish red color. Okay, um, and so you can see here the TA is prepping the bromine, is going to pour a large quantity of it into an Erlenmeyer flask that can then be put in a separate hot water bath so that we can equilibrate the temperatures of the two solutions. All right, so you want them both to be somewhere, you know, very, very close to 35 degrees C. Okay, but <clears throat> um, the big thing here, you can kind of see the color of the bromine solution right it's it's red vibrantly red what's gonna happen here um, in order to see that a, a positive reaction or that the reaction took place you're you're gonna be looking for kind of a more of a yellowish color all right so when you see the yellow color that's an affirmative that okay the reactions finished All right, so the times are not um, going to be uh, very accurate for a couple of, or actually, sorry, for three of the seven test tubes. Uh, test tube one and two, which have phenol and anisole, those react so quickly, um, it really the, the time was just kind of guessed at, All right? Uh, what you saw there was six seconds, All right? So, I mean... Um, that's what you're looking at. That's how quick it was. Um, the TA didn't really even have time to show you the color change for you to see red to yellow. The transition happened so quickly. All right, and then for test tube number seven, one naphthol, it's going to be relatively um, quick as well. So uh, almost instantaneous. So there's that yellow color you're looking for, right? So you can see over here in the corner, you can barely make out that bromine solution, how brown red it is versus that yellow, right? That's a positive reaction, right? Because remember, if bromine is brown, right, as you use it up, you're going to lose the brown color. So in essence, you have an excess. Ooh, there you go. See, look, it's almost clear there. Okay, that's how quickly this reaction can happen. All right, so that's that's like a six-second deal. 
can't really see it. That was too quick. It was about six seconds. Don't worry. All of these time values are summarized at a table at the end for you. All right, and so something that you're um, going to want to be aware of, test tubes 3, 4, 5, and 6, so in order, that would be toluene, diphenyl ether, acetanilide. All right, that's kind of a color, -y, color change. Not really. It's not great. It's You want yellow. That's more of a diluted bromine, not a reaction of bromine. Okay. Anyway, so toluene, diphenyl ether, acetanilide, and 4-bromophenol, those are going to react very, very slowly. All right. if, if at all, if we really see a color change happening. Okay. And so when we start talking about the, the cold water reactions, those four reacted so slowly that we didn't really worry about doing those in the second step, the ice water bath. Okay, so that test tube we just saw, that's going to be a negative reaction, right? We haven't seen the reaction take place yet. All right, so what the TA is trying to show us here is we're almost at the, we're encroaching on the five minute mark, and that color is not yellow. That's that's still brown. That's just diluted bromine based off of adding bromine to the original sample. So in this case, we would consider this to be no reaction happening after five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so you can see the addition of the bromine. See, that's kind of how it looks when it's diluted. Okay, uh, it's being shaken vigorously. Try and help speed up this reaction. All right. So that last one that didn't react, that showed no reaction, that would have been toluene. This one here would have been is going to be diphenyl ether. Okay, so kind of setting it to the side um, to wait and see if a reaction occurs after five minutes. Alright, still doesn't really look like a reaction's taking place. Well, we saw it on the side for a second. Still looked a little orange to me, not yellow. Mm, you can barely make it out. Hello, come back. Come back, test tube, come back. It's still looking kind of brown, not really yellow. Kind of orange, brown, not yellow. 
Come on, dude, monkey. All right, so we're four minutes and thirty something odd seconds. That's oh, there we go, forty seconds. Looks a little lighter. All right, so with that, five minutes, no detectable change. That would have been for diphenyl ether. So kind of the takeaway here with that diphenyl ether, um, you know, it was light brown, so maybe a reaction was trying to happen, but the five minute mark had been reached. So we'll just kind of say no reaction happened. All right, next up, after diphenyl ether, we're looking at acetanilide. All right, and so we can see this light brown orangey color needs to hit up with some yellow. We need yellow. Yellow, yellow, my friend. All right, uh, time lapse has occurred. So we're at two and a half minutes, two minutes, 24 seconds. Uh, and we could see that yellow color in the test tube. All right, that one was obvious that a reaction occurred. All right, looking at our four bromo phenol. Where? All right, so it's just a few seconds in. It's a very light brown, orangey color. Hmm. Whoa, whoa, buddy. Don't try to hit me. It's starting to look kind of yellow. Oh, that looked really yellow to me. Where are we at? Oh, that is a definite reaction. All right, so the time we're looking at is about 2 minutes 15 seconds for that one. All right, so last up, we're looking at one naphthol. Let's put that bromine in and see what happens. Alright, um, it, it was instantaneous. So yeah, Dunsky. Alright, so now, um, based off the times that we saw for some of these, three of them were exceptionally fast. They all fell under a minute, so that's why we use those. Those would have been phenol, anisole, and one naphthol. All right. So due to that, that's why we're putting them in the ice bath. We're going to chill them a little bit. So you see, to, I can see test tube number seven. But All right, so putting it, whoa. Uh, that was yellow real fast. All right, so looking at phenol, even under cold conditions, that one still happened exceptionally fast. So about 24 seconds. All right, so looking at test tube number two, anisole. All okay, that's that went light. That's like light orange real fast. All right, so let's see. How long are you going to take? That's yellow. Oh, it's done. That's yellow. Stick a fork in it. We're going to take that potato out of the oven. Or not.
I need a picture. Give me a picture of that yellow solution. So I know that it's done. I can move on to one nap at all. Okay, yeah, that's big yellow. I mean, all right. So anyway, so looking here's the chart that sum, sums up all the times for you. Um, and so you can see uh, vials 3, 4, 5, and 6. They reacted so slow we didn't worry about the ice water bath. Now, as I said, in the report, you want to analyze these for why, fa why were certain ones fast, right? The cold conditions make sense why we did that, all right? Those cold conditions tell us that we can slow down our reaction so of course that's why we did it right the ones that were really fast under heated conditions we slowed them down so we could actually tell which one was more reactive over the other all right good luck